stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Seek Him and we'll have the peace that passes all understanding. We'll be able to have joy and be able to walk through life without so much as being interrupted by all the circumstances here on life. Remember our purpose in life is to follow the Word of God. In Revelation 4.11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. We are created by God for His pleasure to follow His Word. And all the joy and the blessings are at the end of each time that we follow His Word. Whatever we're doing, Let's cover each moment with silent prayer unto the Lord for blessings and guidance. Then and only then can we walk through life with great comfort that we're walking in the arms of God. Today we'll take away four or five special points. First, Jesus cares about our most embarrassing moments. Even our most embarrassing moments, Jesus cares about them. You ever stuck your foot in your mouth? How big of a mouth have you got? <laughs> you get a size 14 in there, or 15 as Jared has. <laughs> get that in your mouth. <laughs> well, he cares about our embarrassing moments. He's going to help us with them. And Jesus cleans the church of the programs that distract. And we must decide who Jesus is and what he's going to do for our life. And how does God know that, we're all, that we are a Christian? He looks into our heart. Absolutely. So in John the second chapter, let us remember what we must do on special days. What must we do on special days? Praise God. Include God. And then on ordinary days, what must we do? Praise God. Praise God. Include in all these things. You know, what is being left out of a lot of marriages? God. God and Jesus. When I do a certain of marriage, they hear about God and Jesus. It's not anything that they are not going to be aware of. And how? By praying through the name of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will take our prayer, bundle it up in pretty flowers, and present it to God. Isn't that something? He'd take our feeblest prayer and make a powerful prayer for us. Well, we're going to get caught up in this <coughs> wedding miracle and miss the greatest part. The greatest part was that Jesus was there and that they followed the Word of God. Isn't that amazing? So we find in here, in the first verse, <coughs> In the third day there was a marriage in Cain of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Always include Jesus on sacred days and ordinary days alike. How do we include Jesus? Well, here's just a sample prayer. Our Heavenly Father, be with me right now. Bless and guide me with what I'm doing. And I pray this in the name of the holy, holy name of Jesus. <laughs> then the Holy Spirit will take that, bone it up in a bunch of flowers, and give it to God. Well, Jesus teaches the importance of marriage because it's also a symbol of our being invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. In marriage, follow the biblical teachings of putting the other first, be long-suffering, Patient, faithful, learn how to communicate. Now each spouse communicates differently. Uh, the woman wants all the details, the man wants to give you one line. And many times, one is married to a babbling brook and the other is a silent forest. So have compassion on each side. If the babbling brook is standing there, silent forest needs to say, uh huh, yeah, uh huh. Even though they're not taking it in. I tell the uh, women, if you're going to get to the man, you got to get him in the first sentence. You know, don't tell them the trash stinks and smells and 
all that other stuff, and then about two or three minutes later, say, take the trash out. See, he's going to cut you off after you said the first one. <laughs> so if you want to do something, take the trash out. Then you describe how pitiful the situation is. And most of all, we have to realize that each of us are married to what? An imperfect person. <clears throat> Isn't that something? Now, I know my wife don't believe I'm imperfect. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens. We're married to an imperfect person, and we think they're supposed to be perfect. But they're not. So you've got to have compassion in that area. Let Jesus be the silent guest at each and every activity in our life. It's never too late to call Jesus into our marriage, and He will respond. He will make it more wonderful, more loving, more kind. Do we go to Jesus for our friends? Of course. Jesus' mother did. Now several religions also prayed to Mary to ask her to go to Jesus. What's wrong with that? That's not what the Bible tells us to do. And these are religions all over the world. This one religion is really very popular. And I'm talking to one of them, he says, you've got to call. It's all right, we call, we call Mary to go to Jesus. But if you listen to 1 Timothy 2, 5, for there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's the only mediator. You don't pray to Mary and say, Mary, will you go to Jesus and tell him I need this? Well, if we have a problem, where should we go? Jesus. Go through Jesus. Jesus' mother gives us a great, well, that's a great lesson. Have problems. Take to God through Jesus. And you find in the third verse, this is the embarrassing situation. Now they're in a wedding and the host is supposed to fly enough wine for 10 or 15 days where they go on over there, 7 or 8 days. They have feast and they shout hooray and hallelujah for about 7 days. Well, we find that, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to them, they have no wine. And that's very embarrassing. The lesson here is to go to Jesus about all things. Don't let the little bitty things ponder you. Go to them about all things. The incorrect lesson is ask Jesus' mother to, Jesus to do it as some religions do. Again, I want to reiterate what it says for Timothy 2 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Now we're going to find that Jesus is upset. His own mother doesn't realize his mission here on earth. She thinks it's to perform miracles, <laughs> to do those things. Now he's going to be a little bit upset with her, but yet he's going to go ahead and do what she asks. We find that in the fourth verse. Jesus says to their woman, What have I to do with thee? Mine hour has not yet come. His mother sent them to the servants. Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. What's she telling them to do? Follow the word of God. The great lesson to be learned here is that Mary put her concerns for Jesus and left him there. And we find in the sixth verse, and there were six water pots of stone at the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. That's 135 gallons. He's going to make 135 gallons of wine. And Jesus says unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. What did they do? Follow the word of God. And he said unto them, Draw out now. And bear it to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it come, but the servants who drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Today people don't know how blessed they are. They don't know where it came from. We have people out there making billions of dollars. They don't know where it came from. They don't know that it was God that gave it to them. And they're going to have to answer to that. They don't need a billion dollars to live. They could give away millions and millions and not miss it. But that's, uh, they just don't understand. Like the governor didn't know where it came from. 
and saith unto them, Every man is beginning to set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine unto now. Who can make life wasting something good? You remember the song, Something good, beautiful, something good. God gave you something good out of the life. He can take a waste, wasted life. He can take the most horrendous life and make something good out of it. And he says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all the glory of God. Every last thing we do, we need to give the glory unto God. Some people do not go to Jesus about smaller things. They think they can handle it, but don't do that. Everything in life, in all our ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct our path. So everything you're doing, be sure to acknowledge Him. Mary was under stress, <clears throat> and Jesus handled it. You ever been under stress? Jesus will handle it. See how much better things go if we have Jesus as our Savior and follow His commands? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Step out on faith by following the God's command. The results of our actions will impress others to believe and follow Him also. Disciples believed. How did Jesus know they believed? He could see their hearts. And He says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cain of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Remember to put our needs before Jesus, also the needs of others, and watch it work. Maybe not like we think. We may have to step out on faith that what he brings to us will be our best. It says, all things, what's the rest of it? I'd like to say it louder. All things work together for those who love the Lord and are called All to things work together purpose. to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to His purpose. So you may not understand what's going on in your life, but God is working for your best good. You know, when Linda had cancer, she didn't understand that. But now she can help others as they go through cancer. She's helped many. As they went through cancer, she told them what to expect, what to do. And, and people listen because she's been through it. Now, I can tell them what happened to her, but they're not going to be as excited as she tells them what happened. And we may not understand, but he says, All things work for the good of them that are called according to his purpose and to them that love him. So we look for. Well, if Jesus were to go into churches today, what would he change? Well, would he change the stage for an altar? Have more stages in churches today. Would he change that stage for an altar? And why is Jesus going to church for anyway? To worship and pray and teach the Word of God. And we find in the 13th verse, after this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, and his brethren, and his disciples. And they continued not many days. And the Jews passed over his hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. The special temple in Jerusalem. All the Jews come from miles around to be worshipped in that temple. And he's going in there, he's going to catch a surprise. He's going to find such a mess in there he wouldn't believe. He came for worship, but he came everything but worship and learning was going on. He came not for all the activity that churches have, but to worship and teach the Word. See, in there, they thought if they killed an animal and blood was everywhere, that that's what Jesus wanted. But he wanted them to hear the Word. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money city. When he made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money over through the tables, and said unto them that sold those, 
Take these things hence. Make not my, not, not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. That's Psalm 69.9. He tells in 69.9, For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Instead of a quiet place for worship by a meditation, it'd be like an auction house. There's seven this cow, there's seven horses, you know, you've been in an auction where they go, da, da, you, da, 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 and can sell them. And haggling over the prices. No, 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 you got to give me ten, not five. Exchange of coins for the temple coins. They wouldn't take the coins that had Caesar's picture on it. So they had to go and buy coins for them to give back for payment. You can imagine the awful noise and confusion to worshipers. It's where the Gentiles worship. You didn't care about that. They don't care about the Gentiles, as we know through history. Jesus was looking for pure worship, praise, and the word. How his heart must have been broken to see inside the temple of all this going on. Remember, the Bible tells it's not all the external things we do, but a loving and faithful heart. I love what Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 57. He says, For the Lord God will help me, therefore I shall not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. So the Bible says, Don't turn to the left or right, follow the word of God right on. We don't have to be a standout religious nut. You know, a lot of people do all of that, and they kind of weary me, and I see people are religious nuts. But oh, just stand firm in our faith on the Word of God and walk humbly with our God. Well, how do we decide who Jesus is? We check the Bible, the Scriptures. That's how we know who Jesus is. And pray for understanding as much as we can get. We're not going to understand all of it. You're not going to become a great Christian overnight. You're going to probably never get to be a great Christian. Because the more we know, the more we don't know. And that's the way we are as we study. And they wanted a sign. You know, I had a friend of mine who wanted a sign. He wouldn't accept Jesus. Linda was uh, witnessing to him. I'm, and he was from the old timey church where you had to be knocked down. And he said, I ain't going to accept Christ until I'm knocked down. Well, a month or two later, the Lord knocked him down with a heart attack. And he says, I believe. But we don't want to go that way, do we? We believe because we know what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And we must decide who Jesus is. Then after the Jews who said unto them, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? <coughs> Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and three days I will raise it up. The Jews are never ready for a spiritual conversation like many today. They don't know what the Bible is talking spiritually. They think everything's physically. And so they said, well, wait a minute. It took us 40 years to build this thing. And you're going to build it in three days? Then said the Jews, 46 years was this temple in building. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this unto them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus said. The, Jesus, the Jews did not understand. But we must remember in the Bible, God is more often speaking spiritually than physically. We are physical beings, so we're going to first attempt, we're going to think it's physically. But he's speaking spiritually. So stand firm on the faith in Jesus and his word. Let's take Jesus into our heart and life, recognizing He is our Savior. He's our friend, our counselor, our mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Comforter, giver of immortal wisdom and eternal life. This is what Jesus is to us. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Can we fool Jesus into believing that we're a great Christian? No, not going to happen. Why 
would Jesus not commit himself to some of these people? He could see, right. their, he could see their heart, couldn't he? They believed because of the miracles. They were seed on shallow soil. Remember the four kinds of seed? The shallow soil that rises up all of a sudden, and the first thing that happens, they turn away. So we find he's got these kind of people here in front of him. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name. When they saw the miracles which he did, but Jesus not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. He knows all men. He knows our hearts. Can we testify for our friends? No. <laughs> It'd be nice, wouldn't it, if we could take all of our relatives who are not in church today and pray for them. And we can pray for them, <laughs> but we can't testify to God that they're good people. You know, there's some religions pray for the dead. I think it's a bit late. We need to pray for the ones that are alive, that they know Jesus Christ is their Savior. You know, I've got a lot of relatives. I mean, my relatives would, would fill this church up if I could get them to come to church, if I could get them to believe in Jesus Christ. But they're young and strong, and they think that there, nothing can happen to them. They think they've got tomorrow or the next day. But they do not. And needed not that he should testify, man, for he knew what was in man. No matter what people say, God does not need us to testify whether someone is good or bad. You know, people say, well, that person surely is going to go to heaven if anybody knows. Well, I hope so. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, he's not going to go. But we can thank Jesus putting someone in our life that's been helpful. Think about the person who first brought you to Jesus Christ. The first one that introduced you to the word that God loves you and that Jesus wants you. And remember our, what are our <coughs> verses to remember? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 verse 6, 1, 5, 17 they will help you immeasurably. They will keep you in the Word. They will make sure you go to the Word to find the answer. And I'm giving you sheets back there on the, uh, sitting in the pew back there that points to certain situations. Sometimes they don't have knowledge or don't have time to look up. But you look on that sheet and it tells you certain situations and how to go to the Word to understand them. So we're looking forward 